fuck it. Hello there, and welcome to the very first episode of um, some co-community guys talking podcast. I'm AE, and um, at the topmost part of your screen, you have being Kimbo, Findeed. Hello, Findeed. Hello. Is that Kimbo or Fimbo? Fimbo. Now I'm, I'm called Fimbo. Or Kindeed. Kimbo is the best Polish hope. Oh, yeah, indeed. Um, we also then have in the middle a legend from Company Heroes Community Past. It's Ibkai Fung, everybody. Good evening, E. How are you doing? That's very, uh, that's very rapey sounding. And then <laughs> at the very bottom, talking about very rapey sounding, we do, of course, have Sturm Tiger Gaddafi. Hello there. Yeah, yeah hello. I only rape for fun. No the, offense. The, these kind of statements are why this is no. an adults only, <laughs> adults, adults <laughs> only stream. And we've already discussed this. If in our community, if you say something terrible, but then say, I was only joking, or I was only trolling bro, or it was a prank, or no offense, you can say whatever you want. That's right, guys, isn't it? Yeah, yeah you just have to end it with MV game. It MV is punctuation. Game, it's it's a new, new form of punctuation. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, we are, of course, parodying certain events in our community. Uh, we have also discovered that uh, Stem Tiger Daffy has been spying on us or collecting our chat comments for the past several years. And he, we don't know what he's going to do with this information quite yet. But well, he's just a Mark Zuckerberg of Co2, isn't he, really? He's just going to sell it on to, like, like the window cleaners or something so then they, they know what they want to sell us. All I can tell you guys, Daddy G Intelligence is strong. It, it, yeah. High IQ plays in the community. High IQ plays. High IQ plays only. We, we do actually have some semblance of structure today, though. Uh, we yeah. or, or tonight. There is something going on this weekend. It's going to be absolutely huge. I believe that um, Farhu is going to be streaming on um, t tomorrow morning. He's going to be playing 2v2. It's going to be a blast. Mm. We know we do have GCS2 bag ration happening. It's the fourth qualification tournament. And... Uh, and me and the guys are going to have a little bit of a chat about it. You guys can see my screen. That is right. Can you confirm? Can confirm? Yes, can confirm. I cannot confirm nor deny. Th that's that's classic Storm Tiger Gaddafi for you. <laughs> so th this this tournament is pretty interesting going into it because we've we've got three qualifiers uh, and to test Findy very quickly. Who are those three qualifiers? They are Devem, Love Nest, and Von Aston. Well answered. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, let's talk about the guys that have bloody qualified so far. I mean, Gaddafi right now, who's who's your number one seed heading into GCS2? Right now, uh, does he have to qualify or not? Oh, so he, the, okay. So you, you're are trying you to talk about the guys that are already qualified or... Well, I was hoping. I was hoping you'd say somebody that's already qualified. Surely these guys have proved that you know they're pretty much on top of the game right now. Would that not be the case? Well, here's how I feel about that. Uh, okay. First of all, these guys are probably rusty because they haven't played on high level in, in so long. So Dev M. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that because I don't know. But uh, uh, Dev M. Lovenest and Von Aston. I have a feeling that they're getting stale at this moment because they're not participating in active competition. But um, if I had to pick right now, I would probably have to save one Ivan because, you know, I'm a one Ivan <laughs> fanboy, right? Yes. And here is why. The reason why I pick one Ivan besides being his fanboy, of course, is because he's a freaking machine. He is undestructible. That guy, and I'm telling you this openly right now, right here, this is an exclusive for only for, in for America, your, only in America and only for your Twitch stream. This is my theory about one Ivan. The only reason why he uh, sort of didn't play too well in the last qualifier is because he wanted to get more practice in. And that's really? his advantage. Yes. Surely he can't do that? That's that's illegal. He's breaking the law. Breaking the law. He's, he's breaking the law or not breaking the law regardless. But I think down somewhere down deep within his brain, I think that's exactly how he feels about <laughs> Nicely uh, his competition. But, but and... I think Lovnest has also been guilty of this. I mean... I think these guys mm -hmm. have played well and played hard, but also played within the back of their heads. If I don't qualify in these first few tournaments, I'm probably still going to be okay. I mean, Ibkai, you're a referee and a tournament organizer. What do you think hearing these words? Um, I, I can see some merit in people perhaps sandbagging so that they get more game time. I can, I can see that. 
I, I can see like for for Love Nest because because basically I don't think he's been playing much for this. Hmm. So I'm, I think that you know he's got he had to, he is took is this is the third qualifier took him to qualify didn't it? That's but, right. Yeah. Yeah, I think he may be gearing up. Um, the person, I mean, back to the original question about who you think's going to well, who I think is going to win. Um, normally, people would say, "Oh, defending champion is probably the strongest choice." I would go for that, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone else won, because it's really hard to stay on the top. It is hard to stay on top, and I'm actually going to navigate us to a tournament from yesterday's past. And I'm sorry, Findy. I mean, Findy, may I just ask you, by the way, when did you start following this com competitive community and the game, etc.? And, and not not just the game, but like the people involved in the game, kind of thing. Oh God. Um... Probably while I was at university, so maybe 2015, something okay. like that, um, following it, but not really particularly like good gamer until much later. So uh, even though I haven't played much recently, I'd still say I'm at the top of my game. Um, but uh, I'm quite old, considering... Are you really? I'm old as fuck. I'm 28. How old are you? I'm, I'm 25, but when, when you see some of the people that are getting involved in the community now and like rising to the top, they're usually quite a lot younger. Yeah. I think that from this point... It's going to be difficult to maintain my standings, as it were, without a lot of practice. I tried to get into this. Co one actually is a twenty-two year old university dropout, and I struggled. Um, anyway, I wanted to show you guys. You can see the screen right now. This is actually a tournament that is the tournament that got me into coming here. It's Ami Pulitzer Cy Funk's masterpiece from Game Replays, Co2.org days. Um, Ipkai will remember this one well. This oh, is SNF four. Oh this is SNF4. This is the daddy of Co1 tournaments. Would you agree with that, Gaddafi? And uh, I, this is I... an instant classic. This is an instant classic. It was. It was. It was. Because I think Fireball used to go by the name Ma Malin or something. Was Alias. It, as well? it was Alias. 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 It. Alias. Yeah, the Slovenian dude. Yeah. Yeah. He I was a beast. That. But yep. it, it, this is the tournament that gave me the four tournaments idea. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of the Co2 stuff because I thought Co2 is in a bad place when Co2 to Org and Ami were running those big tournaments. I. I I, I'm so. I think we're so privileged now. We have Co2 in the state it is because we're now able to revisit it and use all this great knowledge from the past and try and like make a really cool tournament now. That's that's the aim. But the reason I'm bringing this to your attention is if you notice, there's a story here. The first contender belt bout was with very. This is by by the way for everybody tuning in. This is two, late 2012, really mm. late in 2012. Um, so it's like pretty ancient. See that November 2012? It says there. You'll notice Aim Strong. Uh, a younger Armstrong versus a child named Devem. That was the mm -hmm. first um, the first game there. And uh, Devem qualified first. No, he qualified last. Oh, shit. Have I gone the wrong way around here? Yeah, yeah. Aimstrong oh, my bad. So, no, sorry. Sorry, yeah. I've read that wrong. Yeah. I've read that wrong. Armstrong qualified first. This is the story. Well said, Ipkai. Um, Armstrong qualified first. Then Devem struggled to qualify against Symbiosis. And then struggled to... Um, and then it was similar over here. Yeah, the top right it's is the second here. one. Yeah. But the story is, is Armstrong qualified first, got rusty, and then couldn't perform in the semi-finals. So he did a great job of, you know, winning in November. But come, I think this is like, yeah, January. You see that? It's all in January, this stuff. So yeah. two months prior to the main tournament, the history is there. If you qualify first, it can be seen as a disadvantage. And that's what I'm trying to show there. So you're, yeah. you're thinking Devon's going to make the same mistake that Armstrong did at this point? I know he's a student of history, and I know these two guys have already spoken about this, but can you stay sharp? I mean, Devon was like, everybody thinks he's like this weird guy that has this innate talent with coming here. It's bullshit. It's a weird game. Nobody's born with the ability. He's a computer grad student. He's always played this game as a kid, but he comes into it now and he analyzes it like a motherfucker. He will literally sit there with build orders, capping orders, map placements more than i've ever seen any other player maybe there's a few others but him because i'm i have personal access to him as a friend i see him do that so i i don't know if he'll make the same mistakes again i'm I, but i am but interested not, if he will not only does he you know think about build orders and and and, and the strategy in general he also analyzes his opponents and he knows exactly what kind of build orders they do uh in each particular map as well and uh um there are two players that are actually quite great at it. One is Devem and the other one is Jeslin. Mm. And uh, Jeslin actually has a, a, a little bit less of a uh, memory than Devem because he has to write shit on, on, on the paper, right? We, mm. We've seen that a couple of times where he actually wrote the sticky notes of, of different builds by his opponents and so on. But um, 
I think Devem doesn't write, he remembers. Um, I want to bring Referro in at this point. Referro, you've actually played against some of these guys that we're talking about. And just in general, is there anybody that you think is special in our community that actually you think when you play them, holy shit, this guy has nailed this? Right. He's in chat now. Oh, is he? No, he's on in the, the Twitch chat, yeah. Has he not in, not listened to my question there? In meeting sometime, it depends how long the He's probably is, formulating an answer. I think that was a very important question. He's probably gone away there. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting debate, and it's just nice to look back through history uh, and try and contemplate that. But let's get on to the, the subject at hand, which is, of course, the tournament that is coming up this weekend. Now... You may have seen that uh, we've released a stream schedule, so all the action's going to be going on starting on Saturday. Um, I'm casting with Tightrope. We've got Doggy Lulz for the win. Imperial Dane and uh, White Flash and Trucks, which is an interesting combo. Oh, that is going to be hilarious. Have you guys seen their stream? I have, yeah. I'm, I've only seen White Flash stream. These guys are off the charts. These guys are funny as hell. Like, I love those guys. <laughs> <laughs> they're good. Keep an eye on. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Keep an eye on them. They're not necessarily the most technically sound uh, casters, but uh, you know, just the random chit chats that they have is just hilarious. Highly recommended. Casting is such a subjective beast, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I, I, I know there's some people that love my casting, and I know there's some people that really hate it, and it kind of alarms me that you can never uh, hope to achieve. Everybody just enjoys your casting, like. Yeah. Even tightrope people say, "Oh, he's boring. I won't listen to him." And I fucking love that guy. Uh, and you know, it's he has a really crazy. peculiar voice that you know, it sounds like ASMR, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, you put it before you want to go to bed, and you're you're down in like two seconds, right? <laughs> when you hear him. But you know, no disrespect, of course. But I love him. But <laughs> did you, you know. see that stuff I got him to make the uh, him go reading the bedtime story? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is great. That was yeah. amazing. Uh, uh, casting is difficult. Um, you won't be able to please everyone. Um, I mean, the, the way I, I did it, and I thought that, like, compared to running tournaments, I think casting is way easier, though. Mm. But what I did, I just basically learned all the stats, and then, like, there would be an interesting unit would come and say, oh, you know that unit? That's got, like, 140 penetration, and then a, a oh, rotation yeah. of that, and then that's how the player's going to exploit it. That's all I did. I can't remember. I don't know what the stats are now. I haven't, like, looked up on it, so... If I was to cast, I'd just be used to doing, oh, that's a nice explosion. Yeah, good flank. Um, if Kai, there's, there's footage of us casting together in 2014 on one of my uh, my early tournaments, and it ain't pretty. To put it bluntly, it's not it's not stellar stuff, but I agree. that's that's uh, You're very, very knowledgeable about the game, and I think uh, it definitely worked for you. It did about... time. I'm no, I'm no longer knowledgeable now. You've uh, got to do like, the hype for us that you did for, for Army back in the day. Well, the Vuvuzela bust. I can't. Oh, is it uh, Vuvuzela or hold on? You did something special there. I remember. It was a Vuvuzela, but it's it's broken. Oh, um, that's so unfortunate. Thank God. Can't use it anymore. How did you break it? Um, stepped on it. No, oh. you didn't. We all know you're a kinky, <laughs> dirty slut. We know what the kind of things you like to do. Yeah. But let's not talk about that because it is a you know it's a PG thirteen stream. Uh, Findeed, you were very rude. Just I did ask you a question. I think you were AFK for a moment. Oh, sorry. Did what? What did you ask? Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. You know, you can take you can take a dump on stream. It's fine. Um, what? Don't call me Barton. <laughs> did you did you wash your hands, Findy? No. You can't stream with. Do you, you, you guys know. know the Barton story, don't you? Where we, me and Dan had had literally set up an ESL studio in his friend's business, and it was the game where Barton decided to take a dump, and we were waiting for fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, we were there all this effort. I mean, Sturm, you really shouldn't laugh at these things. You're you're one of the enablers in this community, you know. You, <laughs> That's freaking hilarious. Was it because he ate too much soap? Yeah. He never uh, ate the soap, did he? No, I never got him to do that. <laughs> I remember that interview that, that they did with him after SNF5, and he's like, you know, so what, what food do you like to eat? I like to eat soap. You know, oh. So. <laughs> furo has got a really interesting point. I want to put this to you guys in chat. Uh, downright, one of the players that have baffled me through the years is Loveness for his calm and collected play style that has every tournament shown incredible form. Cough, war paint, cough. I think he is not really up to this level as tournament yet, but he has seemed to be a very special player that in his ability to always deliver. Do you think Referro finds Loveness sexually attractive? 
I think we would be <laughs> Definitely. I mean, he's really tall, got blue hair. I mean, blue eyes, blonde hair. You know, blonde uh, eyes. Yeah. yeah. I, Before, I admit it. Admit it, Rafero. Oh, here we go. Pictures. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Like, yeah, let's, let's get a few yeah. of these pictures going on. This is uh, Love Nest and Dev M doing their pose from last year. These are the, the very poor AE photo shoots that happened in AE's flat. And uh, the less said, the better, to be honest. You know, you this, know, this like is those, kind of um, cringe material. Like, I even got them in the garage outside. I mean, this does this cry esports to you guys when you see this? I mean, it cries. Uh, it cries basically. You know, local garage wrestling promotion. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Backyard uh, wrestling. You know, all, all those fist bumps and all of that. Like, <laughs> okay, hang on a second, guys. Hang on a that's second. That's why do, I could do a wrestling uh, promo for the for you, you guys. They must. They must have gotten ripped up by barbed wire or something like five minutes after this shot was taken. <laughs> hang on, hang on, guys. This is going to be incredibly racist and, and funny. So wait a second. I am the blonde bomber, and I am going to win at Wrestle Palooza. I am the human fly. <laughs> <laughs> he's like the luchador, and he's like the big Carl Drogo s figure. You know that that works. You guys have clearly not watched as much WWE as me. Never mind. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think who it would be. Devem, he'd be Rey Mysterio Jr. and uh, Love Nest. He'd be. Hmm. He actually looks like a young Stone Cold Steve Austin before he lost his hair, but uh, let's not get yeah, into wrestling but, uh, too much. No. But but <laughs> just going back on topic briefly, I think the next trophy should be a belt instead of a trophy. Yes, that would be awesome. Yeah, we should do belts, for the next yeah. Year. Just a belt. And you can have the John Cena-style spinny one. Yeah. <laughs> John Cena spinny one. <laughs> st- Make it cheesy. On the way to GCS, by the way, we did see a, um, a car that had R2-D2 ex- inexplicably in the back of it. I don't know if th- that was a bad omen for the event. I don't want to show too many crowd pictures because maybe people thought there was a big crowd last year, but... Uh, well, e- I could... Oh, if Kai the was there. If Kai was there. I was there. I was there. Yeah, but hold on. You know what you do when you have low crowd? Yeah. You just turn off the lights so they can't see the, the empty seats, right? That's yeah. exactly what we did do, actually. That's... Yeah. You can invite some homeless people in. Yeah, There's the crowd. Happen. Look at that capacity crowd, everybody. Oh. <laughs> anyway, how back many? On... One, two, three, four, twenty. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Anyway, back on back on topic. We're talking about players. We're talking about GCS uh, to qualify for bag ration because I can see this being one of those YouTube videos where people have to take it on a podcast. You know, on a long car journey with them at this rate. Um, but we, we're going to be talking about the matchups that are possible this weekend. If all the players sign in, you know you've got your top eight seeds. And uh, as you all know, this now looks a little bit something like this. So we're ignoring the players that have qualified. We've got Von Ivan, Jessulin, Referro, who's in chat. Hello, Referro. Uh, Talisman, Aimstrong, Stuve, Helping Hands, and Sidolio. Not sure if Sidolio will play, but you know Jay would take his place. Um, so... I think that's going to be Sidolia? interesting. Why is he butt hurt? Why didn't he play last tourney or last qualifier? No idea. I was idea. pretty surprised because he he had reasonable chance to actually qualify. Findy, do you have any info on that? Maybe. I don't actually. Um, no, I'm sorry, I've got no idea why he didn't play. Uh, I what do about remember Silda? Playing... What's happening with the Brits? It, you know. Um, I think it's because uh, the government have told us to start stockpiling food, canned food, so that's <laughs> what they're busy. Are you afraid of, of that quality Russian nuclear attack? <laughs> Is that um, one they scare you with? Yeah, and that, and also that there'll be no more trucks coming in next year, so everyone's getting like tin big beans and spam, which is what most people will be living off next year. Oh, wow. No more what? Trucks? Yeah, apparently. What kind yeah. of trucks? If, what if do you mean by trucks? You won't get anything coming through. Lorries. Yeah. Apparently, you won't get any more deliveries of foods. Now, I must, oh. stre- I must stress that uh, Ip Kai Fung is a little bit left wing which is absolutely fine um i'm somewhere in the center but a lot of americans are right of center so when they hear somebody that's like quintessentially british and pessimistic about the whole like brexit thing they're like no you'll be fine you uk 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 and ip kai's like no life is over (laughs) i wouldn't say life is over it's just going to be less comfortable (laughs) <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to call that an end now I just wanted to very quickly address the personalities we've got on display cause, yeah, fun yeah, fact, I actually campaigned for yes in Redditch for referendum 
believe it or oh, not. You no. told me about this. You're you're yep. a campaign manager or some shit, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a campaign manager and independent observer of the election process. That's very interesting, yeah. and um, I'd love to delve into mm. that. But I am conscious that it's my job to keep us on topic. Yeah, and we will touch on and that. And I don't want to talk date. about it, but just fun fact. <laughs> yeah, you can't probably for NDA reasons. Anyway, this is pretty brutal, but that's pretty much what we've got here. We've got eight seeds that will say, you know, in typical seeding order. If we discount any possibilities. Well, before we discount people, is there any is there anybody that jumps out on you from the nine to twenty bracket that possibly has the um, the option to break out and cause upset in this uh, this tournament this weekend? I, I think would... Hooligan, if he's if he's still playing to his his excellence that he's shown in other tournaments, still could cause an upset if he if he tries hard enough. Yeah, I think Hooligan, he's a dark horse if there ever is one. We all saw what he did to Aimstrong last year. And we've, he had some great games this tournament, in fairness. I mean, guys, if you look at some of the uh, games he's been involved in, he may not have gotten far, but he's been a very difficult opponent at, well, yeah. at all times. He has been involved in some crazy wars. Yeah. I, and I've watched some of the replays in tense games. He, he's a trooper. He's a true trooper. I mean, look at that. He mm. beats Caesar. Um, then lost to Devon, but every Devon, by the way, said that this was his hardest game, and I kid you not, Devon said versus Hooligan that there, or maybe this one, sorry, one twenty nine versus zero, that was his hardest game. That's uh, crazy to consider. He's got amazing determination when he gets into these tournament games. It just doesn't fail. I think it's maybe because he actually uh, put himself into a little bit of a corner. He, I was offering this guy. He's always been a great referee and a good friend for me. And I was like, dude, to be honest, if you're going to ref, you can probably make it to the tournament. But if you're going to play, you're going to have to earn, you know, earn your place at the tournament by being a player. So he could have just come to the tournament for free. I was going to pay his like forty pounds Holland flights just as a reward for being a good ref all these years. But no, he chose the hard way, and I think that's commendable. Mm. Uh, yeah, but bring him in, right? I mean, regardless what he does, I mean, is he, yeah, he going to attend? Uh, waiting to see how many places we got left, and then I'm also waiting to see what kind of budget we've got, and then we can play with little things like true friends yeah, of the community. We might send some invites out. It's a good idea. Don't worry about the budget. I mean, I'll cover that 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 stuff. I mean, for him and for for like all the important people. Don't worry about that. It's don't a, worry, it's very, I got you, mate. Yeah. It's very important. We try and do things by the book at first, and then we yeah. can look at stuff like that after. We've got plenty no, of time. We've like, got plenty of time. Yeah, I don't want anybody missing out on the event, you know, just because you know we we're over the budget for forty bucks or whatever. Oh you know? yeah, so sure. That's, it's that's not a matter of money. I mean, I, I, yeah. don't don't get me wrong. We all know that you're a very very um, lovely and wealthy benefactor, and we we respect you very much in the GCS two community. I'm joking here, I'm trying to you know like lick every your, game, lick every, your game. Ins, every game, every game, every yeah, game. But if, if, you, if you look if you look over here, I mean, we actually have limited capacity. Oh, uh, that's the, a fact. The yeah. event, yeah, the event kind of venue owner has like said okay like keep it at 40 people and i don't think i counted players originally and i'm now trying to push up to 35 attendees plus staff plus eight players so 50 people so i'm already pushing boundaries mm. on this one yeah 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 so and i mean ed his ed is the venue owner's brother so ed's like fully you know with me let's make it as amazing as possible but you have to be careful and we've had a few dropouts so we're actually we actually do have a few spaces left right now um, but it's, it's we have to be a bit careful of who we let attend and stuff, so it's not quite as simple. Can anybody remember what we were saying? Oh yes, we yes, were so saying people from the lower bracket. Lower uh, brackets, bracket. and I believe Findeed said hooligan. I mean, hooligan. Any anybody else you've seen, guys? Uh, I I, I don't think we can discount Barton. Um, mm, yeah, although he's not in form, that. but. He is definitely a contender not to be messed with. Um, and I think if anybody has a potential to surprise uh, top-seeded players or the players that we feel are highly likely to, to win and advance, I think that's him. Uh, and I wouldn't even be surprised. He, he could be a dark horse that could win the thing. Um, you know, uh, It's crazy to think, possible. but he did it in SNF5, and we'll never forget that. That was insanity, yeah. the fact that he won that day. Um, so... Well... We Oh, I don't know. When I was watching that, hmm, those games, man, in the final, I think against, he was a better player on the day, to be honest. I think against ONG Pop. Yeah, I think it was he just was one much... of those throwaway things that I was trying to say to, uh, so I can uh, think whilst mm. I'm moving my mouse. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> he, of course, he did great. I mean, you know, 
that was an interesting tournament. That was another one of those crazy um, four bracket tournaments, wasn't it? That's another one we could have looked at. In fact, yeah. I did. A, I actually did a mock up of that tournament with the GCS point system to see how it would work. That's how much I've tried to look into that. But um, anyway, we're now actually getting into the meat of things. Our viewers will be pleased to know is we're now getting onto the matchups. So everybody knows in a traditional tournament, you're going to have seed eight versus seed one, which would give us um, Sodolio versus Von Ivan. Mm. And um, we're going to give... Everybody's going to have an opinion here. Uh, we'll just call you Gaddafi. Yeah, got... I don't know why you call me Stern Tiger. It's, it's Gaddafi, man. Like, that's my original name. It, okay. That, yeah, because the, the, the clan is like Stoom Tiger, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, we've got Fung Wait. and we've got Deed. Excellent. So, Deed, Fung, and Gaddafi. Um, Gaddafi, your predictions, please. Von Ivan for Sadolio. Well, I'll give you one guess. Indeed. Um, what about your predictions for this match? And have you got any insight? Oh, I think, I think, on balance, it would be Von Ivan, but I think Sadolio would give him a damage fight. <laughs> sorry, that was a bit of a. You know, I was only joking with you, Gaddafi. I was ever so sorry to be rude there. Have you got any more insight than just saying, obviously, you're you're Von Ivan's main man? But, uh, you know, any more thoughts on that one? Well, I'm telling you, One Ivan has a strategy in mind. One Ivan is going to execute that strategy. And One Ivan is a completely different player from what we see him in uh, in, the, in the live stream versus the tournament. Uh, last couple, he, he is probably the player with the most consistencies out of everybody currently participating in GCS2. He has been scrimming. He has been playing ladder for good year now, nonstop. Every... If not every day, every other day, you can see him stream. Like, he he is down to a T. As far as his positioning is concerned, as far as his uh, strategies are concerned, as far as his, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ipkai, potential surprises. Ipkai, mm. Ipkai, as a counterpoint, I mean, do you believe that there's something called quality over quantity with regards to practicing for a competitive event? Uh, no. I think you just got to play as many games as you can. Really? Um, Mm. I, I, I'd like yeah. to counter that point. I think that is, if you're playing against subpar players, you tend to drop the little things that make you win games against the really good ones. I think you get sloppy if you play players that you know aren't... Don't have yeah, a chance actually, I, I take that back, actually, because I, I, just, I just thought of an example of some other players. There's this one guy I, I know from a different game, but he, he only practices about two hours a day, mm. but he spends the rest of the day watching people play like the videos and he looks at what mm. they do. So he does a lot more research than actual playing. So, I mean, his mechanics of the game are really sharp. They're on point. And the two hours are enough for that. But he spends most of his time just look, looking up videos. So he has a look and sees, oh, who's in the tournament? Oh, is that guy? I'll look up his videos and see how he played. I'm not going to, I'm not going to. I'm not going to criticize Von Ivan too much because I know he does. He's a very intelligent guy with great strategies and a lot of thought off stream. However, on stream, one could be forgiven for thinking he finds one meta strat and then abuses it versus NA two hundred ranks at like two AM in the morning, and and, mm. and he, that's like that's I'm not saying that's what he does. I'm saying that you could parody him as doing that. You could exaggerate yep. and say he finds like mobile defense doctrine, and yeah. then you'll see him crushing like one hundred ranks. And it's what what benefit would one get out of that? Yeah, you, you might have people yep. that are secretly practicing that are scrimming instead of playing on stream that could get more quality out of their experience. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But yeah. you gotta give him. You gotta give him some, you know, uh, excuses in, to that end because I mean he's obviously, you know, a full-time professional. And, you know, he doesn't have pl time to play, or he's at work while you know at the mm. peak of the EU hours. So, and that's the same for me. You know, I come home and I get to you know bash noobs all day long. <laughs> yeah. In two v two, not in one v one, but you get my point. I, I mean, get, like I do get your point. Um, sorry, Tip Kai. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, Is I, it an important point you wanted to make there, or? Well, I was just, I was just going to bring it back to like SNF five, like OMG Pop, for example. Everybody knew he did strat all the time, and he managed to get to the finals. Mm, you know, I think moaning that someone does the same strat over and over again. I think in this game it doesn't matter too much because, well, it, the game has changed a bit. Um, it has. But, it has changed a lot since that time, but I mean, he got really far just doing the one strat, and everyone's like, oh my god, no one's come up with a counter to it. And, well, you know, <laughs> I suppose it was early days as well. But with regards to the matchup, as long as Vaughn doesn't send back, I think he'll win. All right, so I've, I've now got the, uh, you'll be pleased to know, the SNF5 brackets up. And the, the story of this one was pretty much the opposite of when we were talking about SNF4 earlier. 
And that is that Barton had four attempts to qualify and he got stronger and stronger and stronger until he became a monster. That's pretty much what happened if, uh, if everybody remembers. Four, yeah, because Dev M was the last guy to qualify as Barton just kept plugging away and, and then he finally got there. Um, he just kept getting oh my God. further who, who every is round. Who is that? Andy's, versus, ripping. Andy's ripping versus in, in the first Are you round. in this tournament? Is it I first am in that round? tournament. Oh, God. Are you, are you Holy Hammer? No, no. I'm Stern Tiger Gaddafi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't even find him. Is he no, it's, really, it's really the, small it's writing? First, it's in the first contender bout. I can't see it. Your writing's oh, too sorry, small. Oh, sorry. No, in the... We'll never find you. It's like trying to find an ant, you know. It's ugh. first round brackets are too difficult to scan. I'm sorry. Oh, right there, right there. No, you right there. I can anybody see? I don't know what he's on it, but I can't see anything. I right there. Mm. Between Jim and Cruzy. You're not Jim. Yeah, no, no, but Stum Stum Tig Gidaf. I'm that, just joking, I'm guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, come on, eh? Hey. Oh my God, really? <laughs> but anyway, this this was a very interesting tournament i put the gcs um point system through this and it came out with the same top eight that was how i kind of tried to validate how my point system worked if you just as a, a little bit of info there anyway we're now going to go back to what we were doing which was uh ipkai von sedoya yeah. i just want your predictions just be brutal yeah so as long as von doesn't sandbag he should win interesting talisman aimstrong is going to be a way more tighter call and just to you know just to give a little cells a bit of background on these players, they've had a, a very interesting passage. One's hit high heights. One's been a little bit kind of just always there. But um, both have solid histories. But um, I want, I'm eager to hear your opinions. Me first? Yeah, please. Uh, Talisman. Uh, Armstrong just doesn't have consistency, doesn't play. He's a cash grab player. Um, he doesn't show up. Uh, it does an auto match. Uh, he only plays and practices when uh, the turn is ready. He does not have consistencies, and the consistency and talisman, I think, has been uh, really good uh, in the first qualifier. And I believe he skipped one qualifier, which is unfortunate. Had he played that qualifier, he would have advanced. Um, but I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a bloody war. But at the end of the day, I think Talisman's gonna take to, it. To challenge that, I mean, Armstrong actually has more one v one auto match games than Talisman does. Um, so I I, I I contest the idea that I think Armstrong has cash grabbed in the past. Yeah. I'm not contending that, but I don't think there's anything wrong with him training solidly for the past six months to play for GCS, hitting rank one Brits, um, and staying there pretty consistently. Yeah. Uh, but he's not going to play Brits, is he? Who knows? Has he played Brits before in GCS? I he tried to, but he made it count. Not GCS. Yeah. I don't think he's played them in GCS 2, actually. Yeah, he did. There was a match he played against Dev M. I remember it was casted, and uh, he had the two universal carriers, and it just oh, oh, yeah, that... Years, that game. It would have been GCS 2, though. No, no, it was definitely this. I remember seeing it he this year. He hasn't played Dev M in GCS 2. No, that was an auto match game. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was just a random game. People were casting. Yeah. yeah, people do that these days. It's crazy. Hmm. What? Well, I'm sure he made a comment on the forum about trying Brits out and they're not working though. I, I know there was something. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, he's very. He's one of the uh, Brit players that are very salty that there were just very small pa uh, balance patches that have over time eroded the crutches the Brits use. So the idea is that they're a, 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 not a very well-designed faction, but you can play them if you rely on these crutches. And these slowly got eroded over time to the point where they're useless. See, for example, look, look at that series. Uh, uh, Joe versus Armstrong. Armstrong should have beat that guy like to the pulp. He lost yeah, to nothing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, I think he was, very dis he was very disappointed in himself on that one. Um, he, he was very... Uh, he was very happy with his performance in the second tournament. You know, he did well. He beat Jay. He beat uh, Toronto, who's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, he took a game off Van Aston, who's now qualified. So I think yeah. at this point, I was starting to get really confident about Armstrong's chances. Um, but let's talk about his opponent a little bit. I mean, we know how well Talisman has done in general. That first tournament, he got to the final in every game lasting an hour, it felt. Hmm. Do we know why he didn't play the, the third tournament? Uh, IRL stuff, uh, genuine oh. IRL commitments. He always told me he wouldn't be able to play the third one. Okay. It wasn't anything uh, spontaneous. Um, and then in the second one, he didn't do quite so well. Obviously, Nagano, fantastic player. He will be sorely missed. 
Um, but uh, Nagano beat him pretty solidly. It wasn't easy, but it was solid. You know, it didn't ever look like he was going to yeah. lose. Um, so I th let's let's get your predictions. I believe Gaddafi, you've already said that you think Talisman is going to take it. Talisman 2-0. Quite, quite brutal about Aimstrong there, but never mind. Oh, wow. <laughs> I speak as an Aimstrong fanboy, of course. Uh, yeah. Findeed, what Fair are your enough. thoughts? I think, I think it will be a, I think it will be will be Talisman, but I think Aimstrong will take a game off him. And the reason I think that uh, Talisman will win is because Aimstrong is still quite reckless as a player. He still goes for those rushes and pushes that uh, a player like Talisman is quite well equipped to defend against, and he's very prepared to Tory. So he, he. Interesting. He will plant the mines. He will have the AT guns ready so that when Aimstrong goes for these pushes, which aren't always, they aren't necessarily as good as, as say, someone like Bon Ivan. No. So he'll he'll break against this wall of talisman. Whether whether talisman will be able to go on and win the tournament is another matter. But I think talisman is is a style of player that Aimstrong comes up against and struggles. Okay. And for that reason, I think it's it's talisman. It's an interesting thought. Um, Ipkai. Yeah, I think at the moment Talisman is um, just oh. more match fit than Aimstrong is at the moment. Yeah, that's right, okay. Um, no, no, because said Talisman, not Aimstrong. I know, Aimstrong, yeah. Because well, Ibkai Ip is more of a classic kind of player. No, no, I did it's say Talisman. A, I, I, I said... know it will lose to Aimstrong, that's what you said, it's fine. Uh, we'll no, get... no, I, I said Talisman. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because you were like a Co-1 veteran and you like remember the old days when Aimstrong used to like ride a chariot of fire and I destroy everybody that. with the skulls and the coolness. I know that, but Talisman is kind of like the code to Symbiosis. He is. And I know, it's exactly I know Aimstrong right. did have trouble with he Symbiosis. He did! <laughs> yes, so he did. <laughs> that's, you know, it's sort of like, by proxy, Talisman is Symbiosis. So you, like, <sighs> put brackets next to Talisman, Symbiosis. I actually think Von Ivan has a lot of the Symbi about him. If, if, if those that don't know, Symbiosis was a very uh, passive player in the early game. No, that used to build. I mean, like, Simbi was sort of like, oh, I've lost one manpower, I better quit the game. You know, he, he, he was that kind of like, I better not lose any manpower at all and have this big... Okay, you're right, minutes. yeah, that is more talisman, you know? way more talisman. It is it is true. Um, guys, I didn't take scores off you very quickly. Gaddafi, Von Ivan versus Sidolia, what would the score be? Oh, 2-0. 2-0, Yeah. Uh, 1-1, one, one. okay, fine. 1-1? <laughs> one, one. <laughs> one, one. That's not possible. 1-2. Uh, 2-1, two. Two, yeah, because you said Von yeah. Ivan, we're just doing the scores of the winner. Epkai? I think it's going to be 2-0. 2-0. Fair enough. And then uh, the, the Talisman victory for you, Gaddafi? 2-0. Uh, You're a bitch. Talisman for you, <laughs> uh, Ibkai. I think it's going to be... There's no chance. Unfortunately, 2-0. Bullshit. You guys... Do... Oh, sorry. I meant to be the host. Very interesting, guys. Nice to have you on yeah, the show. Hold on. What are your thoughts, A? Come on. Put your put your name there on, on, on G column. Okay. Yeah, you can't be the Dimble D. Dimble yeah. D. You, you want to take us? I think that'll be close, but I reckon... I don't even think Sidoli will be here, so I, th I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's even going to show up. Like it's, it's pointless. Mm. <sighs> oh. Hmm. Interesting. I think. Uh, I think. I think, I think this tournament was a flash in the pan for Talisman. I think he's great. I think he did well. I think he's been training. I respect him. I like him. But I know how hard Aimstrong has been training as well. I mean, and Talisman I know that he's he's been a bit unlucky in some of his games, especially the one against Theo in that first tournament. And I I trust that if Aimstrong has a good day, I think he's capable of beating any player. He's not capable of consistently winning GCS2. God, no. I'm not suggesting that. But if the stars align tomorrow, he could shock and surprise people. He's the guy that, despite... I know he got given number three seed in OCF, but he still managed to win all those games. Um, yeah. You know, he can surprise people. And I'm just going to yeah. throw a bone of contention in there just to be maybe a little bit of fanboy, maybe a little bit of uh, devil's advocate. But there you go. Sorry. Uh, you're camera, voting with your heart there. Did, we know I mean, you're, you're Aimstrong fanboy. Admit the it. other thing as well to think about as well, Aimstrong could be practicing offline, you know, offline Steam status with like DevM as well. Yeah. That's something that may be happening as well in the background that I don't know Dude, about. In their clan right now, they have Nagano and DevM. And it's, mm. you know, it's, it's, yeah. I, it could be, yeah. I, yeah I'm that, privy that to these, I am, well. I'm privy to some privileged information with that regards, and I won't say too much, but I have reasons to suspect that Aimstrong has underperformed relative to his own expectations and other people's expectations close to him uh, in that last tournament. So I'm, I'm thinking 
he had a bad day, and if he has a good yeah. day tomorrow, it could be very different. But I, I do respect Tally as well, so it could go either yeah. way. Anyway, Jesse and Helping Hands. Is Helping Hands even going to play tomorrow? It should he? Yeah. I mean, uh, if I were him, I wouldn't even show up. There's no point. <laughs> oh. I, I'm brutal on this stream, am I not? You I are. love Hans. I love Hans. Yeah, we need you. God damn. I, I love Hans, but it, well, let's face the facts, guys. I mean, you can't you can't expect to go far in a in, in a company heroes tournament with you know playing Disney as games all day long. You know, like you've got to practice, and like he, helping Hans does not practice. Jesus has been pretty solid this tourney i think this is clear 2-0 for for jesus uh, i think you might be right i mean i'll get onto my own opinions later on but uh yeah findeed i mean i'm eager to hear yours on this one fellow brit what do you think about hans and uh this as possible prospects to qualify this weekend I, I i think that hans has already lost the mental battle that he always has with himself yeah. with can i win do i have it in me and do i have the the, the will to fight and so yeah i think it's jeslin 2-0 Jessel 2 I'm going to just keep that in my copy-paste uh, bank there. Ipkai? I think it's going to be uh, Jesus at 2-1. Uh, oh! Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And uh, I think Jezulin, to pronounce his name incorrectly. Uh, obviously, yeah, probably. I think Han still has it in him somewhere, but I think he would probably kill himself to get that one game. And, he, you know, he would get that one game, but in doing so, he probably, like, you know, he's nothing left of him at this point. Oh, now we're getting into the interesting part. We've got one of the guys in chat right now, Referro. One of the guys is back from the dead after some very um, interesting and fierce debates within referees, within benefactors, within the community. Uh, Stuve is undequeued, and he's back in the tournament. Um, he's apologised. There's been a few things said. A few mitigated circumstances here or there. We're not going to go into it in immense detail. It's all there on the forums. Quite frankly, I'm sick of it. I just want to get back into the competitive mindset of enjoying the games. But he is back. He's a good player. Referro 2. I'm going to start with Findeed this time. What are your thoughts? This is a really, really, really difficult one because they're both pretty good players. Um, Referro, I think, is more refined as a player, definitely. But I think Stuve has got this kind of... He's almost Von Ivan-esque in, in his sort of uh, chaos is a ladder mindset. And I, mm. I think for that reason, it could it could definitely be... Oh, I, oh, it's a really difficult one to say. I think if Stuve plays well, and he definitely makes mistakes, though, then he could win it. But I, I think that on balance, Referro would probably take the series. Wow. that's uh, Referro's stock has gone up so much uh, since like this time last year. I mean... I just oh, want to very Refer has been playing. He's been playing, you know, top of the ladder for the past couple of, you know, months. But before or I get on even to a year. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Uh, before I get on to one of you guys' opinions, we're just very quickly going to get an, another tournament up. We've looked at the SNF, so we're going to look at uh, GCS1 just to get an idea of how far some of these players have come. I believe Referro, yeah, he didn't get past round one last year. Mm -hmm. He, so I. I'm not sure if that's yeah, that's showing up just about on the uh, left of your screen there. If you see, he he lost to Theodosios in the first round. Oh, of but those were tournament. best of fives, right? They were best of fives. It's a very oh, yeah, different that's a, that's a, format that's last a year. Different, yeah, format. Yeah, it's very different. Um, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> it's very interesting to think back on things with GCS yeah. one. Uh, it was very different beast. I'm not. I'm pretty sure I prefer the GCS two format so far, though. I'm I'm liking uh, a return to these delicious. Sudden death, best of three kind of scenarios. Um, Ipkai, we're going to go on to you next. Yeah, I think it's going to be a close one. I think it's going to be a referro to one. Nice. And finally, Mr. Gaddafi. Uh, I, I got to work with my heart here. Um, referro is good. Uh, I think Stuve wants to prove himself, and I think he got a second win with this unban i mean sure he has been you know bitching about being banned and you know uh, talking about how he doesn't care about the tourney and whatnot but you know we know the different the diff uh, the we know that that's not the case right mm. uh he will be begging he will be scratching he'll be screaming he's gonna get into the next round i think Stuve goes through 2-1 i think refer is going to be able to snatch a victory or i shouldn't say snatch he would be able to makes to make more mistakes and lose one game yeah uh, 
I just think my worst nightmare is going to come true. And I think Stu's going to, like, go in Super Saiyan mode. And I just... It's what I fear will happen because I, on a personal level, I struggle to come to terms with Stu. He's a very contentious character, a very interesting character. A lot of people enjoy his stream. I watch it. I see it as like car crash television at times. And on a personal level, like the idea of him coming to this big tournament, it kind of doesn't upset me. It's just a little bit, hmm, I'm not sure if everybody will get on. I'm not. It just makes me a bit uneasy. And I'm sure that's the character he loves to stoke. He likes to make these reactions in people. Um, so I just think that he's going to be out tomorrow to go on like crazy mode. The amount of hours this guy has put in over the past yep. month has been crazy. Like 200 hours a week, stupid mental streams. This guy must have some serious stamina. Stamina, you got to have stamina. He must have it seriously backed up. And I think he might take the day one of storm so this is day one of the tournament done um god who who did we actually give the win to that two nil two nil i i don't know who gets that there does stuve kind of get that because i gave him a two zero guys is that right yeah kind of I think so kind of yeah and then obviously jesulin and then obviously talisman and then obviously one Ivan. That bleeds, leaves us to the semi-finals, guys. Mm. Um, we, we'll go through it a little bit quickly because we've already spoken about the players, I guess. Um, so it shouldn't take us quite as um, long to talk about. But um, Gaddafi, von Ivan, T Talisman. Interesting battle. Uh, interesting indeed. But I'm going to go von Ivan all the way. I, I, I think he's going to win. Um, just pure consistency. That's all. Not much, not much difference in skill level. Just consistency, and uh, he's gonna lose ten thousand squads, and he's still gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> somehow, like we, we gotta handle that. Somehow, we don't know how, but he's gonna sneak some squads in. He's gonna kill some stuff, and nobody will know how. <laughs> Findy, what Classic about you, guys, sir? I think I think he's stylistically gonna be very similar to the previous matchup, but I think Von Ivan's gonna take it. Von Ivan's gonna take it. Okay. Yeah. Ape guys, similar. Yeah, I think Von's gonna take it. It's gonna be close. But I think one. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say. I mean, I, I'm yet to be convinced by Talisman. I think he's an amazing player, but I think that I'm yet to be convinced that the first tournament wasn't just a really good day for him. And like, he Didn't loads he of things came together. Did he knock out one in one one of the previous qualifiers? His first performance uh, was actually knocking out Von Aston. Um, so similar name. But um, no, he, look at that day. He had an amazing day. He beat so many great players. Um, but then we've only look seen it. we've he only seen owes, him. He two two owes one Aston and one Aston two owes uh, uh, your Armstrong, right? So I don't know how Armstrong is going to have tough time. Two two one versus Armstrong. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, I, I think Von Ivan's do it. I haven't yet to be convinced of Talisman. I know Von Ivan's possibly been holding back a little bit, like we said earlier. So, yeah. Uh, Jezulin Stuv. Now, just to stop us there, we actually have already had this match. Yeah. It was probably one of the best matches of mean. the entire tournament. And we're actually going to watch a little bit of that back together now. I'm sure it'll come up if I put Jezulin Stuv into Googles. It will indeed. Best of one. Amazing game. And uh, that's exactly what it was. Um, did you guys watch this game? I did, but I can't remember it that well. I watched too many games, I can't remember either. Okay, this one was crazy, right? So you got Jezulin, South, Soviets versus Stuve, OKW in the North. It's a full 50 minute, 5 minute uh, crazy battle. And Jezulin basically just goes for a completely different meta to Stuve. Stuve's all about like the, the Command Panthers. He's all about... This is, this, this is like, you know, a third of the way through the game. This is how crazy it was. Jezulin just goes for full VP control meta. And it, you think Stu's winning for so long, but Jezlin's all the time, he's capping, he's capping. And it basically, he was always kind of in control, but everybody in chat thought Stu was going to win at many points. And I was like, hang on a second, guys. I don't know if you've noticed, but Jezlin's still in this. And he was very much still in this. He got 16 victory points. And, and I know he. I always say he was in control, but he clearly... And there's amazing moments like this. I'll turn the... Uh, Infiltration needs one. Well, sorry, incendiary grenades go in. Got a damaged engine, Panther. Ice just making it oh, through the gap. It's push. being penetrated. 
It is. There it goes. Out yes, of and he had the, uh, the T70 for quite some time, didn't he? And so the T70 is using in the line of sight the, on that uh, thing. Stern Pioneer capping in the center. And uh, Jezlin, bear in mind he Those will Those seagulls? <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry. I live by the coast. <laughs> you got to watch out for them seagulls, man. They'll steal your chip. They are the worst creatures on, on God's Earth. I was in Brighton one time and they just swooped down. Someone had like <laughs> chips. And there's a whole flock of them attack them, and they're just like, like that. Yeah. It was like <laughs> Finding Nemo. Did you see that? Did you see that uh, prank show where they put uh, black sedative into fast food and threw it on the beach? Oh, so god! Yeah, yeah, I've, I've literally seen seagulls eat small children. Oh, yeah. I've seen I've seen a video at a train station. A seagull actually ate a pigeon. It just oh, killed god. the killed the pigeon. Look at these bastards! It. They're taking over the world. Look at this shit. They just uh, come in your house, they don't give a shit. No, they don't. If that thing come by my house, I kill it. I don't think you could. Look at this, look at this little one. This one's famous. Oh yeah, the one up in Scotland who steals the Doritos. Yeah, he steals Doritos! Look at that little ba bastard! Oh, this is such a sick way. <laughs> it is a sick. I don't know what this one's about. This is like creepy. It's like a woman undressing or something. Oh no, the seagull attacks the camera! <laughs> steals the yeah, camera. He steals the camera, that's amazing! <laughs> uh, what the fuck moment, Seagull edition. Look at that. Yeah, they're evil bastard. And he's so gonna drop it and possibly... break the camera. Maybe. Oh, look at that. No. Look at that big shot. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's mm. beautiful upskirting on the Seagull, that's wonderful. Yeah. Could that his hard drive eat your heart out? Oh um, man. We're gonna, now we're going to segue back into the regularly scheduled uh, discussion. Program. Speaking of seagulls, let's talk about GCS. <laughs> so, <See>. Jezlin <Jessie> Seagulls, <laughs> all I'm going to say is I've seen Jezlin do it once. I think we'll see him do it again. And I'm What, gonna steal see... a Dorito? <laughs> no, I think, <laughs> think Jezlin can beat seagulls. I think it's possible. Yeah. That is I... quite an appropriate nickname. My thing. It's already like, an Overwatch ah. player, isn't it? Seagull, but uh, there is one, but there's some. He was doing some real dodgy shit as well. Was he? Yeah, oh. I think there's something him with like little girls and stuff. Oh, going on. That's not good. There, well, there was one Overwatch player. I might be wrong. I might not be. Him. <laughs> this is terrible <laughs> slander. You can't just. You have to know the answer to these things. You know, you Where can't we, just. Oh god. I think he was involved in a scandal. Was he? Okay, no. anyway, let's move on from Ipkai whilst he finds out the scandal on the Overwatch player Seagull. Um, Gaddafi, Jesse Lynn Stuve. Ooh, that's a tough one. We just saw the clips from a, from, from a great game between the two. You know what? I Again, I got a vote with my heart here. Uh, <laughs> I love Stuve, man. I love Stuve. I mean, aside all the shit that he did, and he really needs to calm his tits, to be honest. And if you're Stuve, if you're there, if you're listening, Keep it cool, man. Uh, Stuve and I, I, I couldn't give you the, the logical reason. I, I just think he he's mad. He's uh, he wants to win, and he's gonna win. Stuve, cause Stuve. You heard it for your first yeah. fin deed. It's difficult for me to now say Stuve after I said he'd get beaten by Rafaero, but in, in this matchup, I think he's probably gonna have learned from his. Learn from the previous one. Uh, I, I'm going to say two one to Steve. Really? Again, the uh, going to initiate the scoring way too late, which means now AE's got to do the scoring, and it means uh, Gaddafi's got to say two nil to Steve. Is that okay, Gaddafi? No, no, two one. Two oh, one. two one. My bad. My bad. I think Jesus is going to take one. Take one for the team, just like he did back in uh, in the old days. Year zero, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was when he's born, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, shit. I, I, I'm i not sure, anyway. And uh, it, it, uh, Jesus, or something. Not not no, Jesus, the player. So. I'm, I'm Jesus of Nazareth, that that dude. Oh. Mm. I, Ipkai. I'm going to go for Jesus. Jesus? Oh, what a man. No. What a man. And now we have a tiebreaker, and that means that chats are going to be involved. So let's bring chat. Uh, is there anybody you like in chat, guys? That we need to give an opinion to. Uh, Just the first person to give an opinion, and that will swing the vote. Uh, Any of you. It's it an must be a relevant opinion. He... You can't say, like, I like Seagull. <laughs> well, Preacher spoke. 
Oh, we've had Andra flight. Should we give it? A we did say the first person. We had two. Yeah, we've had two stoves now. We had three stoves. Everybody's saying stove, except for the guys that aren't that are saying Jazzyland. But other than them, everybody's saying stoof. Um And that leaves us to a final, which is pretty obvious. Von Ivan stove. Um, before we get to that, we are actually going to have to do a best of uh, three third place playoff, and we'll do it properly this time around. We'll actually cast it and stuff, and I'm sure the players will complete it. Um, our runoff guys in this case would be Talisman. This is terrible brackets. I'm, my brackets are usually a little tiny bit better than this. Uh, Talisman, Jezulin, guys, just to give us a third place, because we're going to whack this into the calculator after, so it is important. Um, just all speak at once. Three, two, one. Talisman. Jezulin. So, Findeed, you didn't say anything. I did. I said Jezulin. Oh, did you? There you go. That was yeah. two Jezulins to one, one Talisman. Uh, he's your third place champ. That's 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 settled. Third. Now, guys, we have the true final. Sorry, did I just completely disrespect the third place playoff? I'm my bad. The um, true final. Uh, <laughs> you went stew one on 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 third. I did. I did a stew there. Um, anyway, we've gone off final. We've got four contenders for their predictions. Von Ivan, Stuve, Gaddafi. This surely should rip uh, you in apart. Ivan, one Ivan. One what? Ivan. One Ivan. Three or one Ivan is well. Actually, you know what? Let me throw a wrench. Let me throw a wrench here. <laughs> I think it's gonna be one oh one Ivan Stu is gonna get pissed off and he's gonna de he's gonna forfeit and he's gonna get <laughs> that's what my prediction is. Right. That's brilliant. After all that, you know, discussions we had to have and all that it's, it's probably yeah. apps, I suppose that would happen. Um yeah. we'll just go along left to right. Findeed. Uh, I think it's gonna be Von Ivan. Von Ivan's just does what Steve does but way better. Wow, he's like a better Stuve, or Stuve is a worse Von Ivan. Which which is it? Yeah, definitely. Either or. <laughs> Both. <laughs> yeah. Well answered, Kip Kai. Yeah, so I, I think Stuve is the Pound World Von Ivan. And I pick Pound World instead of Pound Land because Pound World have gone bust. So, oh, 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 there Because we go. I think what might happen is Von Ivan might draw a penis out of Sandbag. <laughs> oh. Oh, and right, what, right high Devon again. Right, so. That means, guys, that we now need to enter our... I, I didn't keep scores, I'm, my bad. But we now need to enter into our predictor. Um, so in this situation, our losers all got eight points, which is Referro. If you could help me remember this, guys. We've got Sidolio and Aimstrong, which is unfortunate. They both attained eighth. Mm. And then... Or two below that are Helping Hands and Referro, I believe. That's mm. a shame. I wouldn't want to see that. Referro is becoming an increasing crowd favourite. Um, but Helping Hands and Referro, which takes us to our semi finals, which of course meant that uh, Talisman, of all people, dropped out, and so did Jezulin. Uh, Talisman. Oh no, we know what happened there. We gave Jezulin the third place, didn't we? And then Talisman yes. fourth. That's surprising, you know. Von Ivan, number one. Stuve, number two. We'll give everybody else 16. Which would mean, based on your logic and our predictor, which was incredibly just... There weren't many upsets there, were there? Um, <laughs> We've we got Von Ivan as qualified. We've got qualifying automatically on points. One, two, three. As uh, Stuve, Jezulin, Talisman. And then in the fan votes, we'd have Sidolio... Referro and Aimstrong. And I think you can probably guess what we do now. We'll do a little bit. To, in order to get into the straw poll, guys, I mean, let's do a little bit of shilling for GCS. You do need to donate $40 to our awesome tournament. Sure, it's not too much. Uh, you can do that. Uh, there's links all over that Twitch. I'm sure you'll find them. Sorry, the uh, third place vote there. What did I say, guys? Oh, yeah, it was Referro, yeah, uh, Aimstrong. Referro, Aimstrong, and... Um... Mm. I think so. I, basically, if you donate, isn't it? You yeah, get exactly. Vote. But the, the the whole premise, if if you must know, is the entire vote is going to have like a paragraph of text in front of it, instructing people to vote on who has battled in the most the bravest fashion with the most integrity, honesty, and you know who deserves to come as a player. It's not a popularity contest. I'm sure it will be. But the yeah, idea is it isn't. So on that one, guys, um, I can't actually post. Hang on a sec. 
Request SMS to my phone. So uh, talk about yourselves for a moment, possibly. We'll, we'll go back to the seagulls. How about that? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, play some seagulls. Yeah. Let's see those close-up shots. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look at those legs. <laughs> There's some lucky seagull s out there. Is there a particular English word for a, for a female seagull? No, oh, I think they're just called pests. They're, they're called rats in the sky, doesn't matter. Rats are, aren't those pigeons, right? That's a bird. That's yeah. They're, they're... God, I don't know. Yeah, well, Is I, that a I see my. <laughs> oh, it's funny bird stealing food competition. They're clever birds. That's not a seagull. Yeah. They're stealing no, off a cat them. there. That's really dangerous. But with um with a the seagull, they they almost. Well, look at that dogs. cat. That cat is sick. Look at look at the hair. The it's vote is now up, by the way, guys. It's in Steam chat or Twitch chat rather. Um, please vote. We do want to know who would actually qualify on our predictor. Such a brazen guy, just stealing the picnic. Yeah. That's badass. Yeah, he's like, I don't, I don't give a shit. I'm gonna take your food. No, that was just yeah. I'm bullying. I'm not sure I like that. Anyway, we're yeah. gonna open this up in real time now. Yeah, that uh, seagull needs needs a needs a needs a ban yeah. in GCS. We can't get I a single. Before you hit results, I think people are gonna pick. A you think? Mm. Mm. I think so. I think there's enough of people who um, remember the the, the core one days, who really love Aimstrong, that will fall for him. You, but you're, you're making me moist. I like the sound of that. That's great. That's good. That's great. We've had uh, a few votes so far, and a, a, a tasty 11 votes. Please keep them coming. When we get to 20, we're going to call it a close there. Um, let's talk a little bit about the live event and. Um, a topic that is very interesting to me. I'm going to get this up on the screen for you now. Um, yep. I'm sure this will open on the budget screen. Yes, it will do, indeed. I don't mind talking about the budget, but numbers are a bit boring, and they're not set in stone yet, so there's no point quite yet. But we will instead talk about the idea of double elimination brackets. Double elim. Well, okay. the, your, your accounts don't seem to be double entry. Why would you want double elim tournament? <laughs> Um, mm, so counting joke. I know, I got it. I, I tried to brush over it as though it didn't happen, but uh, unfortunately then you you made me talk about it, which is, is great. Uh, so the whole point in a double elimination, for those that are, are listening, is that every player gets a second chance. Now, mm. I, me and Jan were looking at this earlier, and we remembered that if you remember, Ami Plotsai Funk actually didn't have the uh, very interesting thing at the final, where the, the finalist, that is the winner's bracket guy, is meant to get a second chance also. Do you remember yes. this? Yeah, basically the, the problem that he ran into is that it would take them all day to cast that if it was a bracket reset. Exactly. It, it, I suppose it would have run into that, but fortunately we have all day because we have the entire venue booked and it's all going to be best of three. Um, so the entire idea of double elimination, I'll, I'll keep going on to it, is every single player gets a second chance. So you start with like an eight-player brackets, and if they lose in this round, they drop down to the loser brackets or the lower brackets. We've got to gonna have like a, a drum studio converted into a bunker, and it's literally going to be called the loser bunker. I don't know if you can see that there. Loser then in the, bunker. Then in the semi-final, very similar, they drop down, and they'll place the winner of this first round of losers. Uh, it's pretty brutal to talk about them this way, but they are that. They have been eliminated once, and so they're on their second elimination. And then we finally get to the winner's bracket final. We've got the loser's bracket final down here. God, I really shouldn't have put... This is when I was doing this. <laughs> no, this shouldn't say this. Damn it. Oh, crap. Uh, but anyway, yeah, sorry. This, this is that is me bad for Love Nest, or is, it the, is that the opponent that Love Nest is facing? <sighs> Pretty much, yeah. I was being disparaging when I was talking to Jan earlier. I was trying to get Jan around on the concept. So basically, yeah. the, the first final here, and then it's double elimination, so of course Love Ness would drop down here. He'd face the winner of the the loser bracket simulation. Then he would come back up and have a final pop at DevM. But if somehow DevM were to fall, DevM finally gets his double elimination. So basically, you'd have this epic final system where everybody has to be beaten once in a best of three. Now, just listening to me talk here, guys, do you think this is first feasible in terms of communicating to this to people and getting them on board? Well, the easiest way to communicate is basically um, every player has two lives. Exactly. Is the, to, is the way to communicate it. I like that's, that. That's the easiest way to do it. 
just say like each player's got two two chances basically. So if they lose, it's not over for them. But if they lose again, it's, they're out. Interesting. Yeah, I like that. That's that's a good way to talk about it. I mean, Sturm Tiger, you stole this, and you were the main uh, benefactor for OCF back in the day. Um, yep. And you saw, you know, you, you, in this simulation, you're the main benefactor here. There's quite a few others, but uh, you know, you, you've put a lot of money in. And you, we, your opinion matters just as much as everybody else's. But you've seen all these big tournaments. What do you feel about double elimination as a concept? And do you like uh, like the idea of it? Oh. I'll be brutally honest. Uh, I I don't see the point in that. Um, I I I don't uh, understand what the idea behind that is. Uh, uh, to me, it's it's a tournament, right? You you get seated, you get you play, you lose, you're out. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go drink beer, go troll somebody else, you know, <laughs> but you're out. Uh, it's. I, I don't see what the benefit of, of, of having double elimination is. Okay, I'll, I can now explain to you the benefits, because uh, that's why I'm here, right? The benefits are... There's about three three main benefits, the first of which is psychological. Uh, players have flown all the way over to England. They are nervous. They, they have one match. If they fuck up, they're, they're out. Currently, it would be a best-of-five format. We've proven with GCS1 that best-of-five formats don't really work, because most of them end up 3-0, and they end up pretty quick, pretty much... Sl- quicker than a best of three because as soon as the series is over the players just lose all mentality and they, they don't have a fresh start they they See, can't they don't have the psychology to recover and the, the format isn't really working in that sense so the whole idea of um a, a double elimination is that second point is that- it's tried and proven f- um, in other esports every other esport uses double elimination right now oh, okay but first, uh, you had a point on my first point. Go, go shoot. Yeah, it's it's an interesting argument uh, about uh, the psychology of all of that. And uh, when we analyze some of the games from the from pretty much every single tournament and, and the psychology of it, most of the results are 2-0, 3-0, right? Um, mm-hmm. You lose first game, you completely get sluggish and you 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 don't you stop caring. Um, so from that perspective, that makes sense. Um, of course, this sort of uh, bracket right here doubts me a little bit, but because we have a lot of two one two three three two games, but uh, that's essentially generally what happens, especially with uh, lower like pl- lower ranked players. Uh, they drop one game and they are, they're out pretty much exactly. So I mean, um, l- let's just look at let's pretend OCF was uh, even seeding because it wasn't. Let's pretend it was. Let's pretend all eight guys got there and none of them were handpicked, which is actually. You know, you had Jezulin, Aimstrong, Love Nest, OMG Pop were handpicked, but never mind. Let's pretend it's even. Let's pretend it's, you know, a situation where we've got OMG Pop comes up against Barton, and Barton's just taken by surprise by some crazy tactic, loses in five minutes, and then he's on a weaker faction in game two, and then he's flat, he's literally out of the tournament. It's only three o'clock on Saturday, he's there for the entire weekend. In in the double elimination format, he'd drop down to the loser's bracket. He'd be on last chance saloon. He'd be up against somebody else that's lost. And both of them would be like, shit, I get another chance. I might be able to pop back up eventually. But at least my weekend's not over. At least I get another but, uh, match. I'll tell you what. In a crazy psychology of one Ivan, I bet he would purposely lose the first game or the first series. There's no advantage to it. Well, think about it. I mean, um, we can we can crunch some uh, some sample brackets, but... Uh, if he gets a hard opponent in the round number one, or whatever you call that, uh, winner's round two. Oh, actually, no, that's uh, that's OCF speak. Uh, whoever he gets in a, in the first round, it's going to be highly likely a highly seeded player, right? Or I don't know how you do seeds no, for... No, well, no, sorry. So seeding works by the best player gets the worst player because the only way to keep the best players apart till the final. It's all about... Right, but how are you gonna see? How, how are you gonna see the guys? Uh, I've already told them. You want to hear? Um, sure. There's a message here. I don't mind making this public. Uh, Von Ivan's. Sorry, hang on. I probably. Should... Oh, them Von Ivan memes. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't answer very. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway, I've told the guys basically you've done extremely well in, in GCS so far. You, there may be a situation where you can qualify on points over this weekend. But, you know, just play it absolute hardest. Be Terminators, regardless of safety. Fight to the last drop of blood. You know, that kind of shit. Yeah. 
And I think then uh, Jezlin's like, understood. Good luck tomorrow. And Von Ivan's like, Von Ivan is Von Ivan is up to something, man. I'm I'm telling you, Von Ivan is gonna get in there and he's gonna beat everybody to a bloody pulp. It, it seems that way. He likes to create that mystique about him. He loves yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, it's very, very possible. And that's how you yeah. certainly predicted him happening tomorrow. So, uh... from yeah, from a tournament organizer's point of view, Double Elimination is really good for video games because the video game, most video games aren't very well balanced. Right, that's yeah. the first thing. So, the more chances you have of the the best way to sort of like reduce the RNG, so to speak, is that you've got an extra life in the tournament. Right. Um, seeding is not as important because everyone has a second chance. Mm. as well so eventually you'll get the better players come back um another point is it creates great narratives because you can have like an amazing player so you can have say i don't know say in the first round you have love Ness losing okay but then he's like damn i lost that first game and he fights all the way through the losers bracket to the end as well that creates a great narrative it does if can i make you my pr mm. man for double elimination please would that be okay yeah, I mean, yeah, no, that's no problem. I, I wanted to do double elimination before in the past. The only problem is just the time constraints with it. Yeah, the good thing that is, is, is we, we're going to have four computers. Um, we're going to have the second studio set up. So if we go over here, I've already got like the schedule. Uh, yeah. Kind of, This is just based, this is for my purposes. This is, none of this is meant to be public, by the way, guys. This yeah. is just for me. Um, yeah. This is like, basically, we'd have simultaneous matches, some of which wouldn't be cast. Never mind, they're... Um, but we'd try and get as much of it done as possible. But really, you know, these are all best of three. So if we start at th one o'clock, you know, best of three lasts about an hour and a half on average. Uh, we, we'd get through them. We'd get through them pretty easily. Um, and the I'm, other thing is you, you don't need to do a third place playoff game either. Of course not. You, you do not in a, in a double elimination. It kind of works its way out. Um, that's an interesting topic. I mean, Findy, you've been quite quiet on this one. Yeah, I, I don't know about much about this stuff. But I suppose the only thing I have to say is... is more games is is better really isn't it yeah more competitive games is, is more entertaining more stuff to watch and yeah i mean the, the the biggest reason why double elimination was brought in for like video game tournaments is because a lot of them were like live events so people would come with their pc to like a LAN or something and then they'd be there and they pay however much their entry fee is and they mm -hmm. play one game and then they're out and it's like damn that's a waste of my weekend but if they've got you know the pan possibly to play two games it's not so bad it, it makes it worth more to them, so they're more likely to come again the next. And I'm not saying that's that's what we will do. We'll have a big you know BYOC event oh. because that's that's not possible, unless unless you all want to go to like Insomnia. yeah. Speak, speaking of hardware, how how is that result? They um are players allowed to bring their own uh, oh, keyboard? Oh God, no, no. Oh yes, sorry, keyboards and mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they have to check with us first because I want to install all the drivers beforehand. Um, right. I want to make sure they're not weird kind of like components I've never heard of. I right. want to make sure there's no macros you can have installed on them. Um, the computers and the monitors are supplied by a firm in England that Sega use for their expos. So Relic have good ties there and Relic are going to pay for it. All oh, great nice. spec. They're really good spec. Uh, like I think the i7s with... 1080 Ti's or some shit, 16 gigabytes DDR4. It really good PCs. I, that might not be quite what they were, but they're really good. Um, and then just st standard 1080p monitors. Nothing special with the monitors, unfortunately, yeah. but uh, they're standard. Um, That's okay. Yeah, and so we're gonna have four P four PCs. So I'm pretty con con you know confident it should be okay. I'll bring my PC as a backup. I've got a PC that's very similar to those in spec, so you know we could use mine as a backup in case any broke. It'd be fine. Be fine. So how many games are you going to play at once uh, when you get to... Uh, how uh, do you mean? Well, actually, you can play only two games uh, live, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So we just possibly do a few simultaneous ones. Um, and you guys in the audience, I know you're t coming live in September, Stim Tiger. Sorry, Gaddafi, you'd like to be called. Um, you guys will actually be able to see into the drum booth, booth okay. and uh, see a little bit of the action in the loser's bracket. Um, it's going to the... be a big screen or a projector that's going to... Ca I mean... Uh... Yeah. But we're going to have a big screen projector that's already in situ. We've got that. We might look into expanding the size of the screen, which actually brings me on to the budget. I mean, I don't mind sharing the budget. It's all open source. It will be, event, especially when it becomes more. So I'll just say that now that uh, this right now is an absolute work in progress. It doesn't mean much, to be honest, quite yet until it does, if that makes any sense, because we don't know who's going to qualify. Yep. 
But this is the money we're working with right now. It's a really handsome budget, and I'm I am happy to announce for the very very first time, I am confident we can pay for pretty much anything that we have thrown at us. Um, we've we haven't fully worked out what's going to happen um, with with. With the travel budget, I actually ended up putting most of it into hotels because I realised that players like Love Nest and Von Aston, I could get their plane tickets for thirty dollars. So why not they let them sort the plane tickets out, and I'll pay for the hotel. We'll sorry, we'll pay for the hotels. Yeah. Um, that's how that's working. But we had to budget for a few more expensive flights. Like Devem is from a small town in Portugal. Von Ivan, as you know, he's going to fly from Canada, which is crazy to me. From Canada or from? Yeah, he's going to go to no... Canada. There's no direct oh, flights from Michigan? Canada. Like, what the hell kind of state is that? <laughs> no, there is, but they're super expensive. So we'll make him fly oh, from well. Canada. It was his idea, actually. Yeah, it's, it was like when I was looking at going to Vegas, apparently it's cheaper to go to LAX and then take, like, an internal flight from LAX to, like, McCarran. It's like... It doesn't Jeez. make any sense. Oh, Freaking got, people. Got to unban Barton. It's, uh, you know... I keep him banned at all times, but then if he requests and he's asked nicely, I'll occasionally do it. We'll see what he says. I mean, so, he can't spoil anything right now. There exactly. No I ban him for spoilers most of the time. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> can't spoil predictions. We've we got a few little sneaky things hidden in the budget Bart, there. you rascal. We've got like, things like extra events. I mean, like a show match, maybe. Maybe we do something with Nagano. Who knows? I don't know. Um, we've got something called Bovington. I'm not sure what that's going to be. Maybe we'll pay for entry on everybody that wants to show up on that day we've decided. Uh, just little things here and there. Um, got a grand and a half, roughly, for the venue itself. Um, yeah, not quite that. But anything that doesn't come from this emergency US play, I don't know if you guys can figure out who that is. Emergency uh, US player. If they qualify, basically, I, I'm budgeting for two US players right now. Uh, in Ooh. Because I have to, because what if it did happen? But basically, j for jet is a budget wrecker. Oh. He knows it, he knows it. He, oh, he's yeah. out there. <laughs> j for jets saying it's Momo. It's not Momo, it's J. We we uh, you have to budget for the now nah, it's Hulk Smash. He's saying in chat. We know it. We know it. I, I, I'd imagine Momo would sort of like say, "Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming," and then not turn up. Nine hundred quid on the flight ticket. That yeah, would be but such Mo a Momo Momo's move. Himself, right? I mean, he's gonna be there with with Cias as well. I mean, they're yeah. they're paying for their tickets. If Kai just put his foot in it because uh, Momo's already there. Yeah, he's coming this year. He's donated a hundred dollars as wah, well. Wah. Yeah, I know it's an entirely different Momo. He's a new Momo, and that's for show. Um, that's all. <laughs> oh dear. New Momo for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that are expensive. I mean, look how much the transaction fees cost. They're ridiculous, man. Um, yeah, you just need to get on uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> get Paul. <in. laughs> but I, this is so true, by the way. Paul has actually donated to the tournament, and I, I don't say this lightly because I don't like to mock um, people that <laughs> have donated. But I said to him jokingly on Von Ivan's stream, "Come on, come on, Paula." You clearly loaded now. You're making so much money. Yeah, I'm making so much money. $15,000 a week. You guys couldn't imagine. And I was, I was like saying to him, so, Paula, can you convert this into dollars? And he's like, huh, of course I can convert it into dollars. Who is this guy? And then I just gave him a GCS donation link. Would you guys <laughs> like to know how much Paul donated to GCS? Five uh, bucks? Not more than 20 $14. 14 <laughs> 14 He's like an incredibly wealthy entrepreneur. I was a little bit surprised by that, but these guys that are incredibly rich, they don't get rich by uh, you know donating big money. You know, there's no. Sturm Tiger Gaddafi's family have no kidneys left. It's, it's well, uh, I mean, yeah. The like, way I like, think about it, the more you spend, the more you earn. <laughs> yeah, they they don't let their employees unionize. Yeah. We've we've covered a lot of ground, guys. I think this is now like a one and a half hour podcast probably end up releasing it as a six episode series or something but um we're gonna call it a day there i'm gonna thank each and every one of you for your time thank you uh firstly to mr findeed thank you thank you for me and then of course we have uh, the honorable ib kai fung thank you very much for having me on and the legendary general himself it is sturm tiger Gaddafi. thank you thank you e and that's a uh, good night for me. Thank you, guys, and, uh, and have a good one. Bye-bye.